Good morning, Borada, and welcome to St. Paul's Monastery in Jarrow, or rather the ruins of St. Paul's Monastery in Jarrow. Uh, there is a church on site still, uh, and it's uh, got the heating on, as you can see, <laughs> understandably, because it has been snowing. And the reason I'm here today is to show you that snow is one of the best conditions to do an aerial survey of an archaeological site. So uh, let's take a look. It's around minus one degree Celsius and overnight we got down to minus six degrees. And so the snow hasn't begun to settle and melt. It's crisp and squeaky, crunchy underfoot. And so you get these wonderful crisp outlines of features on and sometimes under the ground, especially early in the morning when oblique shadows are cast, long shadows across the landscape. This is one of the reasons it's a really good idea to try and get a top-down view of an archaeological site when it's just snowed, especially when it's light and thick and gorgeous. Now, while we're up here, it's worthwhile noting how snow has a way of highlighting the, the space between different levels of the landscape. The trees appear above the ground as opposed to blocking your view off the ground. You get more of a sense of, of where things are in relation to each other because of the way that there's a high contrast produced by the snow. It's, it's such a beautiful way to view the landscape at the best of times and it's incredibly useful for archaeologists. And so there you have it. It should be stressed that these aren't uh, necessarily archaeological remains. The lines that are most prominent, the straight lines in the ground, are actually paving slabs that mark the remains of uh, Norman and earlier architecture in this area. Uh, but it, it shows and demonstrates the point. In so much as down the hill, you get a sense of uh, land formation and uh, maybe ploughing over time and a sense of 3D space that you wouldn't normally get if it weren't so highly contrasted with the snow. Uh, and these sorts of formations, right angles in fields, definitely do show up on snowy days, especially when you have lovely morning sun that is uh, providing a nice oblique angle, long shadows across the snow. Uh, or indeed, across uh, a field on a very sunny day very early in the morning. While I was filming, the church warden, I believe, invited me into the building. They had some uh, contractors on site fixing the heating system and I was allowed in through the north door, which isn't normally open to the public, and it's a gorgeous church inside. The oldest part starts in the centre of the church towards the sanctuary and this section dates to around the late 7th century. The site was built in AD 681 at the uh, behest of King Ecgfrith, King of Northumbria, and this is the dedication plaque that was on that church. This is a sculpture of Bede, the Venerable Bede, Saint Bede, Often described as the father of English history, he lived and worked at the monastery in Jarrow and died there in the year 735. As we move into the sanctuary, now where the choir and the altar are to be found, you get a real sense of how these early Saxon churches were fairly simple rectangular rooms. The windows on the walls there are actually original window openings, and it's understandable how this aspect of the church towards the altar at the eastern end remains a key factor in church architecture, with the nave and transepts being added later. Incidentally, the carving there of Christ is by the same artist as the depiction of Bede, Fenwick Lawson. It's quite elegant, I think, quite beautiful for the space. Popping briefly back into the sanctuary, this unassuming circle of glass is in fact the oldest in-use piece of stained glass in Christendom. That's a quote from uh, my guide this morning. It's actually glass that was recovered, I think, in the 1970s during the excavation on site, 
and is Anglo-Saxon stained glass, experimenting presumably with Roman material, reheating it and fixing it on a bed of sand to create new incipient artworks. Uh, there's more glass also found in the uh, Beads World Museum just up the hill. And finally, a little detail of tool marks on stone likely robbed from Roman forts to build the church. Anyway, hopefully, hopefully this has been interesting. Until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.